Good afternoon and welcome to this fifth edition of Data Matters. Um, I think the first thing that you'll notice obviously is that I'm situated in a slightly different position today and there's a reason for that. It's because one, my beautiful dog here, Rhubarb, was feeling a little bit lonely sat over here on the sofa when I was sat at my desk each Friday afternoon and two because my um, business partner Vicky is actually um, unfortunately poorly so it's just little old me however good news you won't just have to listen to me for 30 minutes I've got a special guest who's going to join us in a minute um, Tom Smithson from Horizon Counselling is here to talk to us about techniques, about what is what we can be doing in terms of mindfulness and ways that we can help each other and support each other during this um, pretty awful pandemic. So uh, my name is Steve Wright, as many of you know, <laughs> um, and really we're going to we're going to talk about that this week. And in fact, I was working with um, a colleague of mine just the other day trying to work out really what it is that our audience wants to listen to and hear about. And we've very kindly received lots of suggestions about different topics, about what we can cover off. Uh, and we've taken those and we've put them into a 12 week mini series. And we're gonna be starting that next week, which I'll come back to at the end of this session. But it will cover things like um, lawful basis, uh, retention, third party processing, um, accountability, data security, all the kind of issues that are facing us today. And it's fascinating to watch on the news and in the newspapers uh, this story as it unfolds about the applications that they're developing that will allow us to track and monitor um, those of us in society and those of us specifically who, who have the virus and it'd be using quite interesting techniques to anonymize the data. And I, I think there's going to be some really kind of big ethical questions about who has the data, how long the data is um, you know, held for and where is it situated and who has access to it. And of course, at a time of crisis, um, many things happen, you know, we put in place many sort of temporary controls, we, we, we put in place workarounds, but it's not until years afterwards when someone discovers that the database is still there, <laughs> um, sat on some legacy system, everyone's forgotten about it until it gets exploited. So we're not really going to focus on that this week. What we're going to talk about is health, mental health and well-being. So, <coughs> Excuse me. Without further ado, I'd like to introduce you to Tom Smithson. And in fact, I'm going to I'm going to go live to Tom now and and allow him to introduce himself. Over to you, Tom. Hi, Steve. Thanks for having me. Um, so yes, my name is Tom Smithson. I'm the founder of New Horizon Counselling. Um, so I provide private counselling, um, therapy services, and um, mental health at work. Um, consultations and workshops and training. Um, I'm mainly based in Croydon and Swindon, but I also work online a lot more now, um, obviously, for obvious reasons. And I'm looking forward to talking about um, mental health um, and how we can sort of help each other, really, and help each other get through this strange new time that we're in. Great. Thank you, Tom. Um, and, uh, you know, when, when we started chatting about bringing you onto this show um little did we know that our my business partner would be will poorly herself and um it, it, you know for me mental health and mental well-being is a big part of of life um my mother as as i mentioned to you before is actually a counselor and uh if she's watching hello mum <laughs> um and she, she's taught me a lot about trying to be aware of oneself and being aware of others as well. But it does, it, it's a complex area and, um, you know, it, 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 it struggles and, and I struggle. I don't always recognise um, certain things about people. Or, um, you know, people can often 
um, get confused that, that I'm, I, I might sound as if I'm not being empathetic when I don't really understand all the time what those you know symptoms may be and there might be underlying causes but tell me I, I the, the question that always intrigues me and and I won't tell you about how my mother actually met my dad because uh, <laughs> it's quite interesting but she was a nurse at the time um, but what 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 drives you to go into this line of work I mean it's you're dealing with you know motions and and, and, and messy stuff whereas you know I'm in the world of data and binary bits and bytes and zeros and um, you know it, it's very binary and and I like that because I can understand it and I can see it but this area it I'll be frank it scares me <laughs> so why what inspired you what, what did you wake up one morning and go do you know what I'm going to be a counsellor working with and helping thousands of people although it's very admirable trust me but I'm just curious to know why yeah it's a, it's a good question um, and you know it can be quite a, a, a scary role um, and there's no sort of set um, expectations of what things are going to be like. Um, for me I sort of kind of not fell into counselling but I accessed counselling myself quite a few years back um, through sort of a testing time of my life um, and my um, therapist was absolutely fantastic um, and it was a bit of a time when I didn't really know what I was doing with my life um, and as I was going through the process I thought hang on this is really good I'm enjoying this not only is um, she helping me with my mental health and what's going on for me in my world um, but this actually looks like a really rewarding job um, so I sort of dipped my toes in a couple of short courses to see how I would find it um, and then three four years later here I am and I would never not do it um, you know it's I, I, although it can be really heavy work I absolutely love working with people that sit down in front of me and go Tom this is going on for my for me or I want to change my life and you know being someone that can support them through that process. That's uh, amazing and admirable as I said um, I, I I just you know I, I really do take my hat off to you and and to others in, in the profession and I, I think it's it's interesting because you know there's lots of uh, information out there at the moment about the frontline workers and to what extent you know um suddenly suddenly footballers <laughs> and, and, and famous people are way down there and it's just the it, it you know my niece is a nurse in icu in a local hospital in our local hospital here and 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 suddenly i'm now really attuned to the fact that she may not have well in fact she tells me she does not have enough ppe um, and and all of a sudden, you know, she spent years in that in in that profession of healthcare and caring for people, and I I find it admirable, and it and it just I, I feel a little bit um, I feel a little bit of a fraud coming on here and asking you questions when, um, but hopefully after this session we're going to come away with some sort of tips and uh, your insights, Tom, that can help us help me to get better to support my team and my colleagues and um, other DPOs who are listening in. So, um, OK, look, my next kind of question that I was, I was thinking about this um, whilst I was out for a run. Uh, so, look, we've got a pandemic, OK, that's obvious, and it's forcing us all to work differently. And, and it's my and, and everyone's, you know, quite rightly behind me on this. Um, it's a collective belief that we probably won't go back to the normal working week. We probably won't go back to not certainly not initially, obviously, but you know, I, I've been traveling into London for over 15 years. Um, what's happened is this has forced me to invest in some equipment, <laughs> um, but it's, it's forced me to to act differently, to behave differently. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm sleeping a lot more for a start, but it, it, it's also made me much more relaxed. Um, and so I just wonder what um, what we can do when we're sort of not situated with one another, because because, I, I, you know, I am a people person. I enjoy engaging in conversation, I enjoy um, meeting people and learning about people. 
but what what are the things that we can I can do for my team? It's only a small team, but what can I do as 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 a um, you know as a leader as a DPO to support those around me? What 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 sort of what do I need to look out for? I I don't as I said earlier I I don't even know what to look for. It's not like they've got a cough or something. Yeah, so um, it's, a, it's a really good question because this is um, a really new time and, you know, a lot of people haven't had training to work from afar. We've kind of been thrown into this. Um, so um, for, for, for managers and, and, and business owners who are looking out for their um, their employees, their staff who um, aren't, can't come into an office and have team meetings, um, I'm really trying to push um, those managers to keep in touch with the people that are working with them. Um, it can be easy to forget that they're that they're still there because obviously you can't walk, you're not walking past their desks all the time. Um, yeah. So perhaps checking in with them more than you would have if you were in the office together. You know, a daily phone call, not a daily phone call about have you done this, have you done that. A daily phone call of how are you how are you getting on, how are you doing, do you need anything from me, what more might you need from the business. Um, that would be one thing that I think would be really positive so they know that they're still there and even the the, the people that are, have been furloughed as well you know it doesn't you know, it doesn't mean you're not allowed to contact them and ask them how they are um, because at the end of the day they're still going to be coming back to work um, and you don't want them to feel that they're being for, they've been forgotten about because people that feel forgotten about um, will often stop losing that drive that they they might usually have for work um, and one of the last points which is quite which can be quite good if your company has um, always like finished early on a Friday and gone to the pub or something, still keep that in there. So if you're not going to go to the pub, you know, maybe you can still finish early um, or can you organise a, you know, like a, like a Zoom call or, you know, all these other things that you can do on these apps now um, still have those fun meetings um, with the people that you're working with. It doesn't have to stop um, because you're not working together. I think that's um... Brilliant. Um, thank you. They're, they're really good tips because um, I was talking across the, the, the fence at the required distance, of course, <laughs> um, to my neighbour this morning, and he was telling me how he had gone online, uh, and I'm not advocating this, um, to play poker using Zoom with yeah. his mates. And he said it was the best uh, evening he'd had in a very long time. Um, and uh, I mean, the, the you know the the other worrying part about this, but you know, is is when we, you know, when we when we when we're not seeing people, as you say, I think that's it. it, it it's really hard, you know, because mm -hmm. you know the old saying, "Out of sight, out of mind." Well, I'm a bit mm -hmm. like, yeah. so if I don't see people, I forget. Um, mm -hmm. And um, I'm sure um, my colleagues, if they're listening, will probably go yes, <laughs> recognizing that. Yeah. And, and of course, my what I have found, which is very interesting, is that the day fills up incredibly quickly, <laughs> and I'm really sort of you know struggling, even though um, th there hasn't been an increase and I've actually gained time because I'm not commuting. Um, I still haven't really found much time, but I am spending more time on um, more strategic thinking, which is good. <laughs> you know, more more time for that, and obviously. Um, I can now do my runs with my dog, uh, thus he's asleep, mid-morning rather than at the crack of dawn like we normally do. Um, although uh, I do see more people out <laughs> mid-morning than I do in the early morning. So, okay, <clears throat> that's really helpful because I think as, um, you know, as a team leader and uh, an employer, um, it's very easy to let those things pass you by and, and, and not not do the initiatives that you were just talking about. What what about the signs? What what would I, you know, how how do how can I tell if someone's, um, you know, because because especially if I can only hear them, I, you know, they might I might be able to hear it in their voice. But are there other things that I can do? Uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I would say I'm um, keeping an eye out for changes of behaviour. You know, if you've if you if you've been working with this person for a long um, time, you'll probably have some sort of gauge about how they work, um, and you might naturally notice that things have been um, slightly different. 
And um, yes, you might be able to hear it in their voices, but I would always advocate, I know people don't like it, but I'd always advocate um, like a face-to-face -face online meeting with someone because okay. there's so much that's given away um, by the way we look. You know, we can, you know, if we, if we try really hard, we can change our voice. You know, that we can fantastically say, oh, I'm okay. But it's actually quite hard for our faces to portray that as well. Um, okay. You know, that's one of the really big things about um, counselling is that it's not just about what the clients are saying, it's about how they're presenting and you can use that with um, your employees as well. You know, it's not just what they're saying, it's how they're coming across. Okay, that's that's really interesting because <clears throat> I am I am a being, you know, keen advocate on seeing people mm -hmm. and I just recently done this training um, and I said, uh, so it was six virtual classrooms and, and I said to the participants that, look, if you're not going to come online, then when it comes to the questions part, <laughs> I'm going to pick on you because <laughs> yeah. I actually wanted to see some faces because I couldn't, I couldn't tell when I'm teaching, you know, about legitimate interest assessments. I couldn't tell if they were, you know, if they were sitting there, I don't know, mm -hmm. um, totally not getting it. I, you're right about reading faces. Mm -hmm. um, that That is such a key part of what we do. And in... And, and the fact that we're denied that and, and we're fact that we can't um, catch someone's eye or tell what mood they're in, you know, by seeing them physically <laughs> is, is really, really hard to tell. And I, so I do, I, I, I welcome that. I think it's it's a good watch out, actually. Um, <laughs> all right. So, so, I mean, this is all uh, really helpful stuff, Tom. I think what, what, what I would be interested to know, and this is, I'm more sort of curious about this. You know, you work in a, if, if I think about confidentiality, right? Mm -hmm. You know, this is my world and, and, and privacy and security. We're, we're in unparalleled times, right? This, th th these are unprecedented, you, you know. Well, how, how are you doing your business? What, <laughs> what is it all, you know? Um, how, how do you maintain that confidentiality? I, uh, you know, my daughter keeps walking in the mm. office. Not, um, she has done several times this morning. Uh, my dog scratches at the door. When I'm <laughs> so how do you maintain the sort of trust and the confidentiality in, in this time for you and your business? It's, de it's definitely been a change because I have a really lovely office that's been neglected in, uh, in Croydon at the moment. Um, <laughs> and I'm fortunate that I was already working online with some of my clients. So I kind of had a bit of a head start of, of being able to do that. Okay. Um, but obviously within um, a night that that went from majority of my work being face to face to the majority of well, actually all of it being online. Um, you know, it can be tricky with the um, not with the confidentiality side of stuff, but you've got to be um, aware um, that they're, you need, you need to have a confidentiality. So I'm fortunate that the house is empty. My partner's often working, um, working away, um, except today, but he right now is in the car because, um, you know, I wanted to make sure that I have the privacy. There's not any background noises, um, you know, <laughs> so having you, heads. You sent him to the car. Yeah, he sent him to the car. <laughs> the Wi-Fi reaches out there, we've checked. Um, oh, but that would be, that would be a thing, you know, if you've got an important meeting, um, you could do it in the car as well, because don't get me wrong, I've been working with people who've been working in their cars as well. You know, have the meeting in the car, or if your other half or family member is nice enough to go in the car um, for an hour, you know, why not ask? Um, because it's close quarters here, isn't it? You've got to, you've got to try and um, work around um, what's going to be best. Um, like I say, having headphones in, speakers, so not everything can be um, overheard. Um, for people that are accessing counselling or um, are already in it can be quite hard because often they're coming to a nice private room um, so they don't need to worry about people overhearing it at their home. Um, so again, you can have your, um, you know, FaceTime or Skype on your phone in the car or your laptop in the car or vice versa, you know, find a place that's safe and private for you. So um, that is great, Tom. I, I I will ask my wife to go into the car. <laughs> cool, yeah, sure, she'll be happy with that. <laughs> um, I'll tell her that I've got a confidential. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm joking with you. Um, she she would definitely send me to the car. Um, but it's great. I mean, as you know, Tom, I, I'm very spoiled here because I've got this lovely outbuilding. Um, so it's very confidential. But it, it's, it's, it's a good tip. I like the idea of, I hadn't thought about the car because it's so secure, isn't it? I mean, you, you know, you can speak it, unless you've got it on your loudspeaker, 
Mm. Uh, you know, and it's coming through the um, in in car sort of um, Bluetooth. Um, I mean, this it's interesting because we've we've got a question that's come from the audience, and um, I'm pretty sure this is not necessarily for you, but it might be. This is um, so you've heard, or you may have heard, Tom, that there's some um, uh, vulnerabilities associated with Zoom. Yes, I have heard. Yeah. Okay. So, so what's your? You know, I'm just curious. As, as a, what are you doing? Are you using that particular tool? Or what do you? What, what have you heard about well, the Zoom? I'm not hugely clued up on it, but I have heard it, and obviously, I'm like everyone else, where I read one thing and I suddenly think, oh, but that must be, must be the fact. Um, I with the services that I use, I have um, before all of this happened, I kind of had a rough idea of what ones already had in place. A good amount of um, protection. So, for example, um, you know, FaceTime and Skype already have a lot built in. So, I've, you know, they're the ones I would tend to to go for. Um, I have used Zoom, but I'm kind of a bit um, sort of wary because of the stuff that's coming out in the news. Um, but you know, it's 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 de it's dependent on what the clients are using as well. Because some people, you know, on my laptop computer at the moment, I've got FaceTime, Skype, Zoom, and Microsoft Teams, and it's having to you kind of sometimes have to work with what they're working with um, but I do try and pick the ones that have a bit more security and I make sure my um, computer and laptop's got its own sort of set of um, antivirus stuff on it as well and I would always encourage that to other people. Yeah no that's that's really important and in fact um, part of the training that that um, I was rolling out uh, what was exactly about that because as remote workers um, you know people took their laptops home at the weekend or in, sometimes in the evenings mm. and then suddenly they're propelled into this situation where they're constantly working um, from home and they're not necessarily following the same procedures mm -hmm. that they would have in the office. So one of the things which um, we were advocating in, in the training is, is changing the password, you know, not using the same password as um, you know, your dog's name, <laughs> for example, but also um, about the the antivirus is, is really important and backing up data um, mm -hmm. to the cloud or to wherever your storage, your systems are stored, um, your, you know, your back end server systems. And I think the, the other thing that I learned about the training was, <clears throat> you know, of, of the uh, 100 or so people that I trained, the vast majority of them didn't really have any consideration about Wi-Fi connectivity, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and they didn't understand that open Wi-Fi, for example, is vulnerable from, you know, from being hacked and that sort of thing. And then the other thing that I learned about that was that um, <clears throat> people, uh, this particular company, uh, have um, hard disk encryption on, on, on the laptop. So sorry, Tom, I'm getting a little bit technical. Go for it. Trust me, to learn. I go this week. Um, and and uh, the problem is with hard disk or BIOS encryption, as it's called, is brilliant when the device is switched off. Mm -hmm. But when the, when the device is just shut down, you know, and it's, it's in that sort of temporary mode, if you like, hibernation mode, it's still vulnerable, you, you know, you, you, Windows is there, it's operating system, and therefore it's vulnerable to a sort of brute force attack, which basically cracks the password and, and gets you access onto the machine. Um, and also the big challenge that a lot of organizations have now found is that they haven't got end-to-end um, -end encryption. So you know, this is usually done via virtual private networks or VPNs as they're called. Mm -hmm. And that's where you, you, Citrix is another good example. We, I said I wouldn't go, I'm so sorry. I said I wouldn't go check. <laughs> but the, but the important thing is, I think we're gonna have to change the way we work. That's my, that's my core message here. And everyone who's now just occasionally worked on a Friday afternoon is now obviously situated working in that. I think the the thing here, Tom, is um, what I really, really want to be able to do is help people. What what would be the single biggest thing that I can do to help people? Not just my teams, not 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 just the people that I work with. 
Um, but what's the, what would you say? What can I do to, to make a difference? I can't. I mean, obviously, I could go and volunteer and do stuff like that. But what what would you say? Are you know that what's the single best thing that I could do um, to help others in this time of you know acute mm -hmm. stress and pressure and you know we're suddenly situated where we're working from home and we're used to going off to work with a whistle mm -hmm. um, yeah. and skip. So you know, what could, what could we do? What, what's your thoughts on that? I would say one of the main ones is is a, is a really basic one, which is often forgotten. It's just listening. It's listening to your your employees, listening to your family members, listening to your friends. Um, you know, active active listening. Um, allowing them to speak about whatever they want. Um, be mindful if you're in a, a busy household, you know, you're know you going to be passing people a lot and you might be spending a lot of time with people that you wouldn't normally spend so much time with. So you're going to be seeing a lot of different behaviours that you're not normally used to. Um, listen to them, be aware of these different changes, let them know that you're there to be them um, to listen, to, for them to speak to you as well. Um, because that's one of the most basic things that we can do. We can just be there for someone and we don't always have to be giving advice. Um, we can just have a holding space. Do you know what? That's uh, that's really profound because the amount of times my wife says to me, um, I don't want you to fix this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I just want you to shut up and listen, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> which, you know, I, I do. I must confess, I do struggle to shut up and listen so as you probably gathered um and so my poor listeners so I, I i i've got some great tips here i'm just going to kind of read them back here i think i liked you know what you said keep in touch i think that's really important that it's so easy to forget especially you know where as, as a small business i'm 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 trying to service my clients and i'm trying to grow the business still and it's going to be challenging economic conditions mm -hmm. going forward. So I'm sort of really focused on that at the moment. Um, but I do need to reach out to my my people and my teams, um, as well as my clients, actually. Um, and I like the idea of doing something fun, mm -hmm. um, you know, like um, like a pub quiz, which obviously without the pub, uh, <laughs> so you know, like a virtual quiz. Yeah. That sort of thing. Um, I think the bit you said about confidentiality, I hadn't considered that. I liked, I liked the idea of working um, in the car because um, you know my three kids could stop bothering me. I, I love mm -hmm. the sound of that. No, no, genuinely, I like, mm -hmm. I like the sound of um, the confidentiality. I hadn't considered that because normally I pace up and down the garden um, when when I've got to make a, a sensitive call. Um, I think the point about headphones is probably very good as well because it, it, it insulates and it, and it actually helps you to concentrate on what the other person is saying because the key thing that I've learned from you today, which which I sort of knew but but you've really brought it um, home for me, is about listening mm -hmm. and and you know not trying to solutionize, which is uh very male i'm told but very typical of what i try to do mm -hmm. you know my wife's will start to tell me something oh well what we could do and she, no 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 just just shut up steve <laughs> just listen <laughs> you don't have to solve this one um i think to be honest tom I, I i'm really really grateful that you could take time out to talk to us um it's it's been an absolute pleasure having you on the show this week uh, was there any any kind of closing thoughts before I, I wrap this up? I'm conscious that we're on the half hour now. So, any any closing thoughts, Tom? Yeah, I would say. I mean, first of all, thanks for having me on. It's been um, it's been good. Like it. um, and um, there's a couple of things I just want to sort of put in at the end is that you know it can be really good to keep yourself busy to keep up with your routine. There's loads of stuff going online about upskilling and um, you know getting new hobbies. But I also want to push hard to people that you don't have to do all that stuff. You know, there's a lot of stuff going on right now that we would perhaps wouldn't have done originally. Um, so if you feel you want to slob around for a day, if you haven't got that hour of commute in the morning and you want to stay in bed that extra hour, then go for it. You know, there doesn't have to be this pressure to be using every single second of time that we have because we've kind of got quite a nice little precious time at home right now. 
and why not enjoy it? So yes, have a routine. Yes, you know, keep doing what you're normally doing. If you want to do some upskilling sort of online courses, but if you also just want to stay in your pajamas and sit on the couch and watch Netflix all day, go for it. Every now and then we need to be able to turn off. So I just want to add that tiny little bit at the end. Fantastic. Tom, that, um, Tom from Horizon Counselling, thank you. That has been amazing. Really, <laughs> really, I like the last bit. I'm going to switch off after this and go and watch Game of Thrones. Awesome. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you, Tom. Look, really, really brilliant. Um, so listen, um, listeners, thank you so much for tuning in again this week. I uh, was really glad that we got this opportunity to speak to Tom, an expert in his field. Um, it gives a different perspective to some of the challenges and, that we're all facing. And, and mental health is very real and, and um, really, I'm, I'm acutely aware of it in this current situation, not, not just for my own team, but for, for my family and for myself and, and for the people around me. So thanks again, Tom. Um, right, so now all that's left for me to do is um, please uh, follow us on LinkedIn. It's really important that you come to Privacy Culture and, and, and please join us and we're going to try and bring you more and more content. Um, we try to give links through to the resources and of course if you sign up to Data Matters then you can receive the weekly sheet and of course you'll get the invites um, that come through. And I think what I'm really excited about um, having, you know, this is obviously a subject that's I'm passionate about, uh, data privacy, data security. We, we really have got some big challenges coming up ahead of us. And, you know, as I said last week um, with Ardi, you know, we've still got to comply. We have still got to be thinking about how we can demonstrate that we thought through about the legitimate interest, if that's what we're relying on, or we've got the privacy by design, the privacy impact assessments done, we still need to be demonstrating accountability and compliance. And so the following 12 weeks, we're gonna look at each one of those subjects. I'm gonna bring in a guest DPO from an organization that's actually in the hot seat right now, living through this, even RD is a DPO and is facing some really tough challenges around access to data from parents um, and the authorities. And this is, these are the sorts of things that we as, as the data protection community and the security community have to grapple with on a day-to-day -day basis. So the mini series um, will take us all the way through to July and by then, by then we might be allowed out and that will be a reason to celebrate in its own right. So please um, tune in next week. Uh, it will all be about accountability. We're gonna start with accountability because that's right at the beginning um, and the whole principles of, of privacy is about accountability and ownership and responsibility. So we're gonna start with that interesting subject. I've got a really good guest that I'll announce on Monday um, who's gonna come and join us um, for, for next week's Data Matters. Thank you for listening. Stay safe. Have a good time out there. Uh, oh, sorry, in there, <laughs> in your homes. And uh, look out for each other. Thanks very much. <laughs>